Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly flavored. Praise God. God is good all the time. Amen. Even when you're not. <laughs> Thank you, Master. God is definitely on the move. Things are definitely happening. And we're seeing the continuous exposure of wickedness. Why there's a continuous expo exposure of, of wickedness, there are requirements that God is requiring of his church. And I can tell you that there is a pouring out. Revival's already started. It's already happening. But you got to press in to cross over every day. It's essential or you'll miss it. You'll miss what God's trying to do. You got to cross over. And I'm going to share with you that right now what we're seeing, even though it's, there's a lot of the plagues and all the false lies and all the garbage and whatever that's going on, all this corruption and riots and whatever, this is nothing but an attack against the church. It's an attack against the body of Christ. It's anti-Christ that's rising up because they're being exposed. You know, if... You put a, 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 a wild animal and he gets cornered. He don't like it. And that's what's happening right now. Because the demons are nothing but wild animals. Satan's nothing but a wild animal. He's got a big mouth and everything. And that's what you're seeing is big mouths all over the place. Amen? But in this time of the exposure of corruption and destruction. Now, understand something that's vitally important because even the earth is groaning to be changed and removed from the corruption. The earth is growing. That's why we're going to see more shaking of the earth. We'll see more volcanoes erupting. You're going to see differences of weather, all kinds of things. I'm telling there's going to be more plagues. No, it's not the end. It's just an attack. But the church won't be touched. We won't be touched. The world's going to get touched. So they're going to get either touched by evil or touched by the Lord. But this is the time where you and I are going to shine. It's, this is just the beginning of what's getting, get, not, what you've seen ain't even, not, it's nothing what's getting, getting ready to happen and come. The only time that true light shines is when Complete darkness comes. But God is using churches to be portals and pour out His Spirit. He's raising up warriors. He's calling. There is a call right now to righteousness. There is a call to righteousness. Many people don't even know what righteousness is. They think self-righteousness is righteousness. Self-righteousness. There is a call to righteousness. That's what God is calling. Why? Because those that are not fulfilling the call to righteousness, he will pass over. Does everybody get it? He's going to pass by. And if he passes by, that means you're going to be attacked by darkness. People are going to get plagued. There's going to be much more things that are getting ready to happen. This is just the beginning. But we're still in a time of plenty. Now, that may sound strange because God's strange. <laughs> Praise God. We wouldn't be here if we weren't strange. <laughs> Would you turn to Psalm 96? Call to righteousness. Psalm 96. Glory. I'm telling you, God is, the presence of the Lord is just constantly 
Come in. Awesome. Is everybody okay? Verse 7, Psalm 96, verse 7. Give, the, give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give the Lord glory and strength. Give the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations the Lord reigns. The world also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. He shall judge the peoples righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar in all its fullness. Let the field be joyful in all its that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before the Lord. For he is what? He is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. And he shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. So we see that there's coming. He is coming. He's going to come stronger and stronger and stronger. And in this, he's going to judge the earth. It's the earth and the world are two different things. The earth is considered the planet in all levels of the, uh, like the train, in all levels of the earth and core and everything else. That is called the earth. The world is human habitation and its interaction of humanity under rule. So we see that there's a place where there's the world and then there's the earth. Does everybody understand? Go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. That the earth is associated with its terrain, its levels of terrain. The world is the habitation or an action by rule. That's where you and I are. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Give you a little example of the world and how God sees these things. Is everybody there? First John chapter 2 verse 15. What does it say? Do not what? Love the earth, world. He did not say love the earth. Amen. He said don't love the world. Why? Because that's the area of human habitation and interaction by rule. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because it's ruled by corruption. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So we see here something that the world's influence of its rule is constant unrighteousness. It's lawlessness. It's anti-Christ. Amen? And it has fruits of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That's why you're seeing all kinds of things being exposed right now. And the world is passing away. This realm of habitation is passing away. So it's all coming to a head. It's all coming to the surface. Everything is being exposed, but it's going to pass away. Why? Because Jesus is on his way. And he's going to take the body, and then we're going to return with him, and we're going to reign for a thousand years. So I'm going to tell you, the habitation of the world is going to be different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 17, and the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. In other words, he's not associated with the will of the world. He's associated with the counsel of heaven. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were 
of us. Now, this is powerful. They were exposed and they were removed. Not over, they were not overcomers, but they were partakers of the lust of the world. Refusing to maintain the anointing and rejecting his invitation to the call of righteousness. Now it says here, he says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. Because why? Without the anointing, you cannot overcome. Amen? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. So we see again here that there are those who have been taken out, the fruits of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. They're exposed or removed. They're not overcomers, but partakers with the lust of the world, refusing to maintain the anointing. And they're rejecting the invitation of the call to righteousness. So I'm sharing with you right now that God Almighty is releasing their call to righteousness righteousness. There's a difference. Matthew 5. Did you bring your Holy Ghost erasers? <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 6. Let's speak it. Blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Hmm. So here's something very vitally important. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So what happened to those who are not hungry and thirsty for righteousness? They're cursed. I'm telling you, God's going to pass them right over. For they should be filled. Filled with what? Filled with God's presence. Why? To overcome. Those who thirst and hunger for righteousness. See, that's what the big battle is right now globally. Righteousness against lawlessness. That's what it's all about. Thirst and hunger for righteousness are blessed, which means right standing with God, by expressing His desires. Expressing what? His desires. Isaiah 64. Glory. Call to righteousness. That means the body's got to tighten up. It's got to stop compromising. It's got to stop touching unclean things. It's got to come out of self-righteousness. I'm okay. I don't need to do this. Well, that's what God says you need to do. See, that's self-righteous. Verse 4. Isaiah 64, verse 4. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness. In other words, he touches them. He maintains them. Those who thirst and hunger for righteousness shall be filled. That's how he maintains. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness. You meet him. Anyone want to meet the Lord? Praise God. Who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways, we continue, and we need to be saved. But we all, like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like what? Filthy rags. That's self-righteousness. That's human righteousness. Most humans don't even know what righteousness is. They just know what good and evil is. We, are all, we all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is no one who calls on your name who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. And we are the clay and you are our potter. 
and all we are the work of your hand. Do not be furious, O Lord, nor remember iniquity forever. Indeed, please look, we all are your people. Only by his Spirit can bring Christ's righteousness into our hearts. Anything else is self-righteousness. Amen? Anything of self-righteousness is called pride and arrogance. Psalm 37. Starting at verse 1. A guideline of securing his righteousness. I'm going to say it again. This is a guideline of securing his his righteousness. In verse 1, let's speak it. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. That's his presence. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because there's been a heart exchange every time you get in God's presence. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your what? Righteousness as the light. And your justice as the noonday. That's what's, that's what's happening right now. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only does what? Cars, causes harm. For evil doers shall be what? Cut off. And those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall not be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Again, this is a guideline in securing his righteousness. In Hebrews chapter 1, call to righteousness. Hebrews chapter 1. Glory. Last Tuesday we had a divine interruption. Snap. <laughs> I love divine interruptions. We had a surprise visit from the Lord. <laughs> Did you notice that it lasted a few days? If you caught it. If you caught the anointing, it lasted a few days. If you didn't, it just... <laughs> Verse 1. Hebrews 1, verse 1. Is everybody there? God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the world of his power, when he made by himself, purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than angels as he, by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to you or him a father, and you shall be 
to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Wow. Scepter of righteousness. He says he loves righteousness, but he hates lawlessness. Let me share some of them with you. God does not forgive sin. He doesn't forgive sin. He forgives the sinner. He hates sin. He hates lawlessness. But he forgives the sinner when there's a true repentance and turning. Not one just says, hey, hey, forgive me. But really their heart's not right. That's not repentance. Repentance means to turn. You're turning away from what you were doing. You're turning away from that life. You're turning away from the world and to God. Amen? Remember, he hates sin. He hates lawlessness. He hates it. And he does not forgive sin. He does not forgive lawlessness. He forgives a person when they come to true, humble repentance. Amen? Because there's a lot of Christians out there that are proclaiming they're Christians. But their heart's not with them. They really do not thirst and hunger for righteousness. They thirst and hunger for blessings of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Well, we are going up to another level. The Lord has taken us to another level. And the call to righteousness is essential of cooperation. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20. And again, you know, why do people backslide? Well, well they backslide because they haven't crossed over. Or well, they're not crossing over every day. It's like standing on a set of railroad tracks. You better get off. Amen? You don't get off, you get hit. You need to cross over and get out of the way. Hallelujah. Verse 20. First, uh, oh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Is everybody there? Good. Let's speak it together. Where are for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a what? As a guarantee. Sealed in our hearts. That seal is called the seal of righteousness. Amen? Does everybody get it? You are sealed by the Spirit of God in your heart. And that seal is called righteousness. So the enemy is going to try to rip that seal off. He's going to try to remove your seal of righteousness when you begin to sin and commit lawlessness. It gives them a legal right to access. Remember, the heart is the core of, all, core of all desire. 
So when the desires have changed because of an exchange of the enemy, God sees that and the enemy sees that. He knows where your heart is at. He knows what you're expressing. He knows what your desires are. So the enemy's always trying to change the righteousness with lawlessness. That's his job. He sets people up. He brings offense. Look what he's doing now all over the world. This is an attack from the enemy. You know how many people are stupid? I guess make it simple. Stupid. And, and bit the bait of deception of Satan. You know, there was this art, uh, article, and there was a picture. There was a, there was a guy that had a mask on on one side, and there was a guy that was building a fence out of a, a metal, you know, metal see-through fence. <laughs> he says, your mask is the same thing as me building this fence and trying to keep mosquitoes out. It's like, Whoa. It was hilarious. People were, I mean, they're, we went out to dinner, and I thought I went into a hospital. The, the, wait, the waitress came out to me and said, are you ready for surgery? Dear God, I hope you don't put anything on my plate. You know? <laughs> what are you cooking back there? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but we have been sealed. It's called the seal of righteousness by the Spirit of God, who is the promoter of all righteousness. Amen? Go to Ezekiel chapter 9. Everyone say, I've been sealed. Don't let the enemy steal your seal. Or don't give it away. Ezekiel 9. Again, what is coming, you must maintain the seal of righteousness. Amen? So the enemy can't touch you. Ezekiel 9 and verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Then he called out in my hearing with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces the north, each with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's ink horn as his side, at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. And the glory of, the, of God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen. Now linen is associated with righteousness. In other words, that per person who is considered righteous has linen. So he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. So what was he doing? Sealing them with righteousness. Why? So they wouldn't be touched. And to the others he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women. Do not come near anyone on whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were there killing them, I was left alone. And I fell on my face and cried out and said, O Lord God, 
will you destroy all the remnants of Israel in pouring out your fury on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. And the land is full of what? Blood shed. Now that's not human blood shed. Does everybody understand that? Um, I can't know. I mean, as for sacrifice, uh, animal bloodshed, I mean. This is considered human bloodshed as they ran their children through the fires and sacrificed their own children to demons. This is called bloodshed. Now we see that still occurring in the, the worst country in the world of abortion is China. Or the second. Think about that. China's the worst. That's why they only want one child per family. If you have another child, they kill it. Or you have to have it aborted. So he says, the iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of bloodshed. Again, it's, it's not animal bloodshed. It's human bloodshed. And it's not because of war. It's usually representation of child or unborn sacrifices, un, unholy sacrifices. The land is full of bloodshed and the city full of perversity. I would say uh, we see that all over. For they say, the Lord has forsaken the land and the Lord does not see. And as for me also, my eye will neither spare nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Just then the man clothed with linen who had the inkhorn at his side reported back and said, I have done as you commanded me. I'm telling you, we're getting closer and closer. There are many people that will be plagued. You know, in the book of Revelation, it talks about a third of mankind being killed. There are so many things getting ready to be unleashed, but we are watching things gradually, bit by bit. But remember, if you are sealed with righteousness and you are practicing righteousness, can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Glory. Call to righteousness. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Is everybody okay? Now, you don't have to ask yourself, what is righteousness? Because you already know. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right there. I said, man, let me tell you something. These are some things that we need to work on. These are things you need to get rid of, and these are things you need to stop. Amaziah reminds me of Amazon. <laughs> he was 25 years old when he became king. Can you imagine any of us becoming king or a queen at 25? Dear God, what a dangerous nation that would be. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerohod, Jerohodian of Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a loyal heart. Ooh, snap. See, you can do what's right in the eyes of people, but the heart ain't right. You can go, you can go program anywhere. Anybody can go into a program and do the, do the program. It's like going to jail and doing time. But there's not a willing heart change. And this is where many Christians are these days. This is why God's doing what he's doing. He's trying to rescue as many people as possible. 
He says he desires no one to perish. But if they don't have the seal of righteousness, they will perish. Now, it happened as soon as the kingdom was established for him that he executed his servants who had murdered his father, the king. However, he did not execute their children, but did as it is written in the law, in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, saying, The father shall not be put to death for their children, nor the children be put to death for their fathers, but a person shall die for his own sin. Again, he did what was right there, didn't he? Amen? Well, let's go to verse 14. Verse 14. Now it was so, after Amaziah came from the slaughter of the Edomites. Now those were Nephilim, Nephilim race. That he brought the gods of the people of Seir, set them up to his gods, to be his gods, and bowed down before them and burned incense to them. Therefore the anger of the Lord was aroused against Amaziah, and he sent him a prophet who said to him, Why have you sought the gods of the people which could not rescue their own people from your hand? <laughs> really, he goes in and destroys this whole tribe that worship these false idols. He takes their gods. How stupid can you be? So it was as he talked with him that the king said to him, Have we made you the king's counselor? Oh, a little haughty dude. That's what happens when you touch those unclean idols. Cease. Why should you be killed? Oh, he just threatened him, didn't he? For telling him the truth. Conviction. Hmm. Then the prophet ceased and said, I know that God has determined to destroy you. Because you have done this and have not heeded my advice. I want to share something with you which is important. Many people reject the counsel of the Lord. It's no difference. Nobody gets away with anything. Everybody reaps what they sow. Nobody gets away with it. Amen? Why? Because a person can do what seems to be right in front, but they, can't, they can only hold off so long. Eventually, it's going to manifest. If they do not have a loyal heart, it will eventually manifest. They'll betray you, just like Judas betrayed Jesus. Same thing. Judas followed the whole program. He followed Jesus and everything else. He did all of the right things. And then he sold them out for silver. There's a lot of Judas in the kingdom. They're still there. It's a Judas spirit. Hebrews 12. You know, when Jesus said, one of you is at the table at the Last Supper, one of you is your betrayer, everybody freaked out except Judas. His only concern was money. Remember, he was the treasurer of the 12, you know that? And God knew it. God has a way of setting people up. They think they're getting away with it. Nobody gets away with nothing. Verse 25, Hebrews 12, 25. Is everybody there? See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who what? Speaks from heaven? Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has a promise saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. And it is happening now. The shaking has already begun. It's going to increase, 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 increase. That's why you'll hear more earthquakes. you hear more volcanoes. All kinds of things will begin to escalate. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may what? May remain. 
Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. He's shaking anything and everyone that is not grounded to the foundation of righteousness. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Call to righteousness. Is everybody there? In verse 11, Psalm 89, verse 11. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. The north and the south, you have created them. To bow Herman, rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong in your hand, and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. I mean, think about that. If that's the foundation of his throne, that means that no one that practices anything else but righteousness and justice cannot enter in. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your countenance. Why? Because they walk in his presence. In your name they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. And in your favor, our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord and our king to the Holy One of Israel. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Again, we know righteous fruit. Where there's righteous fruit, it brings righteous judgment. Righteous judgment is called justice. Amen? We are the light of his presence, full with the Spirit in relationship, so we will always produce righteousness. It's not ours, it's his. Psalm 1. Justice. Those are, you know, righteous judgment is justice. In other words, it's associated with righteous decisions. Why? Because the outcome of something. That's why we're to see things through. Many people were hurt, killed, homes and businesses destroyed because uh, the democratic uh, politicians chose not to protect the people, told the police officers to back off and let it happen. They're finding a lot of stuff out now. They're finding all the bricks that were brought in pallets were actually people that own businesses that were involved in this stuff got it over to them. That's why they've designated Antifa a terrorist organization. And because they are now designated as a terrorist organization, that means the military and civilian haven't, can actually shoot and kill them if they wanted to. Because according to if they invade your house or your property, it doesn't mean you're going to go out there and go after them and shoot them. In fact, I don't know if you heard the uh, sheriff of Polk County. It was quite interesting. I loved it. There's more. They need to be more of them. He said, listen, I'm just letting you all know we're all gun carriers here. He said, we like our guns. We, and we, we, in other words, we love our God. We love our guns. We love our freedom. And I'm going to encourage everyone that if any one of these individuals step into your home, that you blow them out. Shoot them right out. So he encouraged them, shoot them. Anyways, I found it quite interesting. We need more sheriffs like that. Man, think about it. If people knew that, people, if, if every house was armed, do you think more robbers would be out there? No. Come on. 
But, you know, in some of these counties or some of these states, they're not allowing these things to happen. They got so many restrictions on guns and whatever. They want to disarm the whole country. Why? Because you can't battle against what you're seeing now. Psalm 1, blesses the man, yes, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hello. That means curses the man who does. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor seats in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the truth or in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, he feeds off of it. He makes sure. He wants to make sure that the righteousness of Christ is secured. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will what? It's going to prosper. He's, and, and the purpose of prosper is to bring glory to God. But the ungodly are not so because they're rebellious. But like the chaff, which wind drives away, why? Because they're dry. They stay dry. But like the chaff which the wind drives away, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment or the reward, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. Hmm. Ephesians 6. What a time to be alive. I'm telling you. To watch all the things that's going on, it's just baffling. Watch Scripture unfolding before our eyes. Imposters increasing, ungodliness increasing. I mean, these people don't even care no more. They're, they're not even, they're not only out of the closet, they're on the front porch. I'm telling you, they're like, Hi. Here we are evil. Catch us if you can, you know. Hallelujah. Glory. I was reading something about, I mean, I mean, and they're so stupid. You know, most of them are so inexperienced with whatever. Not that, anyway. Uh, I guess one, one dude had a Molotov cocktail, was going to throw it on a police car. I guess he decided to use the toilet paper as a wick. <laughs> Went on him. He didn't have time to throw that sucker. Being an ex-gang member, we used to know all about that stuff. We had lines of that stuff lined up. And you don't use toilet paper as a wick. <laughs> Poor kid started on fire, man. Never got a chance to throw it. Anyways, Ephesians 6, verse 10. I don't know what brand it was. I don't know if it was slow lit or, you know. Verse 10, is everybody there? <laughs> I don't know, maybe Sharma's blown, burns longer or something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. Hello, that's plain and simple. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the, dar of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts and wickedness in heavenly places. Man, that's plain and simple. It's amazing how many people just skip over that. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on what? The breastplate of what? Righteousness. Why? Because it protects the heart, the core of all desires. 
And having shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. That's every voice. Amen. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer in, and, and supplication in the what? What does that mean? Tongues. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we see here the breastplate of righteousness to protect the core of all desire from corruption as in your heart. In 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter three. Start at verse one. Beloved, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world, the world, they have and the habitation under rule, does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed that what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. Man, that's enough to say hallelujah. For we shall see him as he is. I mean, think about that. That's around the corner. It's around the corner. I don't mean this corner. I mean, it's soon. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he's pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Does God forgive sin? No. Does he forgive lawlessness? No. What does he forgive? The sinner. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. In him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him, so they're not abiding in him. They're not crossing over. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the what? The devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In other words, that word might mean, I mean, like God can't destroy the devil. Yeah. But he's allowing me and you to partake of destroying the devil. Does everybody get it? We are partaking. We are the restrainers. We are driving out. We are sending them to the pit. We're calling destructive fire down. We are warfaring. On behalf of the kingdom. Practice righteousness. Must have a, a steadfast, loyal heart. Maintaining the presence of the Lord. <laughs> and maintaining the word of the Lord in you. Amen. That's where he says, abide in me and I abide in you. And Revelation 19. In verse 1, call to righteousness. Will you accept the call? That's the invitation. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia. Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he's avenged on her the blood of his servants shed, blood, shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia. Her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then the voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, 
and the sound of the mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saint. Do you understand again? Uh, I've shared this before. The bride of Christ is in the body. Not every one of the body will be removed in the rapture. Only the bride. The ones with the linen garments that they carry. Why? Because they have the seal of righteousness. There are many of those who are plain Christian but don't have a loyal heart. They just want to use God for blessing or whatever purposes. Is everybody okay? Then he said to me, Right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you don't do that. I am your fellow servant and your brethren who has the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Fine linens are the righteous acts of the saints. First Peter 4. And then one more scripture. <clears throat> First Peter four, verse twelve. You know, it's <clears throat> it's really simple in the area to where we humble ourselves. And please don't go to the Lord and tell him you're a humble servant. Puke. You want to offend God, tell him how humble you are. But when you go to the Lord and you humble yourself, and whatever it is, Tell me you want to reach this place. Tell me you want to be sealed with righteousness. Tell me you don't want to live a life of lawlessness. And that you're willing to exchange your heart for his heart. And that your lawlessness and sin and whatever for his righteousness. Go talk to him. He waits for us every single day. Every morning. When you wake up, he's like right there. Are you coming to me? Okay, grab that coffee over and come on over here. Grab that tea. No, don't grab the scrambled eggs. You come. No flesh food. I got food for you. Amen? Go to him every morning. Humble yourself. Whatever it is, exchange it. Let him know. He's not waiting to punish. Amen? Amen? He's waiting to help. Verse 12. <clears throat> 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Hallelujah. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. On their part, he's blaspheming, but on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a moron, I mean a murderer, a thief, an evildoer. Hello. Or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for what? Judgment to begin where? At the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will be the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him and doing good as to a faithful creator. I'm going to close in Psalm 21. <clears throat> Psalm 21, 
Psalm 21 was given to me this morning. And when I began to re speak this, it blew me away. Because the Lord said to me, this is how I see your president. Whoa. See, presidents are known as kings. Read this with me. The king shall have joy in your strength, O Lord, and in your salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. For you met him with blessing of goodness. You set a crown of pure gold upon his head. You've asked life from, from him, and you gave it to him, length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in your salvation, honor and majesty you have placed upon him. For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Your hand will find all your enemies. Your right hand will find those who hate you. You shall make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord shall swallow them up with his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their offspring shall destroy from the earth. You shall destroy from the earth, and their descendants from among the sons of men. For they intended evil against you. They devised a plot which they are not able to perform. Therefore, you will make them turn their back. You will make ready your arrows on your string toward their faces. Be exalted, O Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. Now, during worship, because I just got remembered. I mean, I just remember. I just remembered. <laughs> I saw an arrow fly through. And I kept seeing it. I'm like, Lord, he said, those are my arrows. It is happening right now. And what do we just talk about here? Talked about an arrow, right? Somewhere in there. It says, therefore, you will make them turn their backs and you will make ready your arrows on your string toward their faces. I'm telling you, things are happening right now that is overwhelming. Cry out to him. Talk to him. Don't be religious. Talk to him. Humble yourself. Lord, I want your righteousness to be expressed. If his righteousness is expressed... So is his desires. Amen? Accept the seal of righteousness. Accept the call of righteousness. Because that's what is happening right now and until we go home. Does everybody get it? Until we go home. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And I pray for each and every one here tonight that has heard your word or that's watching or will hear your word here, this message. That you'll give them a thirst and hunger for your righteousness. And that you would humble each and every one of us, Lord, and expose anything that's offensive to you. Help us, Master. We are nothing without you. And prepare us for the things that are coming that we may be an expression of your love, power, truth, and righteousness in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.